Whether you're starting to think about trying or whether you have been trying to get pregnant and it just hasn't happened yet, you are gonna find helpful tips in this video. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist helping people for almost 20 years. And I've got five top tips to help you get pregnant. Whether it's in clinic with my own patients or on social media, I love teaching and you can find lots of resources here on YouTube or my website, drlaurashaheen.com. Make sure and like and subscribe to this channel so you get my weekly videos all about reproductive health. I've been on YouTube now consistently for a little over a year and there are two videos that get an incredible response and interest and comments, almost a million views together. It's my baby making tips number one and two videos where people love asking questions and really wanna learn more about these tips that I have and things that I teach my own patients every single day. So in this video, we're gonna go a little bit more in depth on five of the main things that you can do to help your chances of getting pregnant soon. Tip number one, tracking your menstrual cycle is crucial. You have got to know when you are ovulating and when to time trying in order to get pregnant. I see patients every day who've been trying to conceive for a year or two and they learn more about their cycle and optimizing timing with a half hour visit with me than they ever learned before they walk through the doors. So don't wait to learn this. If you understand when you're ovulating and you understand the physiology of timing trying, you're going to get pregnant faster. There are physical signs of ovulation, like increasing and thinning of the cervical mucus. There are test strips like ovulation predictor kits you can use. You can follow basal body temperatures because after ovulation, when your body makes progesterone, then your basal body temperature goes up by a degree. These are really important things to understand and I have got videos here to help you. The two videos I would go to right now are my ovulation tips where I go through all of this information about how to know when you're ovulating. And the second video is what is a normal period because you have to know what is normal in order to know what is abnormal and when you should seek help. Do not be the patient that I see a couple of times a month that is just never knows when their period is coming, can skip cycles for three to six months and had no idea that this meant that they were not ovulating and had no idea that if they'd come to see me sooner, that we could have figured out why they weren't ovulating regularly, help make it happen and help them conceive sooner. Tip number two, nutrition and fertility. I am talking to my patients every single day about optimizing their overall health and well-being because the healthier you are, the more reproductively healthy you are. And if you could start in one place, start with nutrition. This can feel hard, but it doesn't have to be. It's simple choices that you make every day that can optimize your overall health, your nutrition, and therefore your fertility. Now there's no one amazing diet or one particular food that you have to do or restrict from your diet. Everybody's a little bit different, but the one diet that's been studied the most is the Mediterranean diet. The Mediterranean diet is full of fresh fruits and vegetables. A little bit of protein is coming from more you know, chicken and fish and less red meat or even protein from vegetables if you happen to be vegetarian or vegan. Dairy is full fat dairy if you're gonna enjoy dairy as a part of your diet. So a Mediterranean diet, if you have to choose one, is the one to choose and it's studied over and over and over to improve fertility. What's great about this diet is it's really focused on fresh fruits and vegetables, less processed foods. The more processed the foods, the less nutrients and also the more exposure of these foods to plastics and BPAs and things in the whole processing treatment of the food that is gonna get into our system. So if you have a choice between applesauce and an apple, eat the apple. One thing that's really important when you're thinking about nutrition is don't get into a shame cycle. So many flashy recommendations, you know, Instagram ads or influencers are saying you have to eliminate these foods that are inflammatory. Gluten and dairy are almost always brought up. Listen, if you have diagnosed celiac disease, absolutely, if you eliminate gluten from your diet, you are going to feel better and it's going to be much better for your entire system. But that doesn't mean everyone who's trying to have a baby has to stop eating gluten. That doesn't mean everybody that wants to get pregnant has to stop having dairy. It's um, really tempting to want to have a quick fix. You want to get pregnant, it's not happening. You wanna change something in your diet and just make it so you can get pregnant. So I understand and I 
get that feeling. But the downside of this sort of elimination or this shame around food is it can really introduce some disordered eating. If someone's had an eating disorder in the past, it can trigger that. And if you don't get pregnant in the month that you're trying this new diet, you usually don't blame the new diet, you blame yourself. You weren't good enough. You didn't follow it well enough and therefore you're really kind of getting on this shame cycle. So overall, make it simple. Make most of your choices fresh, non-processed as best you can, um, but enjoy the things that you enjoy every once in a while. Nothing is 100%. Um, just be very kind to yourself along the way. I have three videos here that are all about nutrition and go into the evidence. I go into a deep dive and I go through research. I've got the nutrition and fertility video, the foods that improve fertility video, and the foods that harm fertility video. So I hope that the resources and the information and pointers I have in those videos can also be helpful to you. Tip number three, lifestyle modifications to optimize, again, your health and your fertility. We've already really discussed the importance of nutrition, but that's not the only thing. I talk about nutrition. I also talk about the importance of sleep, the importance of exercise and moving your body and stress management. Whether you are trying at home without intervention or whether you are doing IVF and the most high-tech fertility treatments, you cannot ignore nutrition, exercise, sleep, and stress management. It's going to improve your overall fertility and your success with any treatment that you choose. So sleep, prioritize sleep. It is absolutely important. It helps balance our hormones. It resets us. It allows to decrease in that cortisol or stress hormone level so that the rest of our hormones can work well together. Prioritize sleep. I've got a great video here that really gives some sleep tips to make sure that you're trying your best to meet your goal of seven to eight hours a night. And sometimes that's not possible, but just do the best that you can. Exercise and fertility is such a confusing topic and many people get so many different recommendations from different places and different sources. I think one of the worst things people can do is just stop moving their body because they're so afraid that it's gonna impact their chances of getting pregnant. Movement is important for your physical health, for your mental health. Now you may need to modify depending on what your activity level is and you've got to review it with your doctor because everyone is unique. But I would love for you to modify, not eliminate movement. I've got great videos here on exercise and fertility as well as exercise during IVF stimulation because it's a little bit different. There are some things to be aware of, of exercising too much or certain types of exercise in the middle of an IVF stimulation cycle when your ovaries are swollen um, you've got to be careful but again you don't have to completely stop moving your body you just might want to modify and I really hope those videos can help now the next thing that is so important to talk about with lifestyle optimization is stress management such a common question does stress cause infertility how can we figure that out it's like the chicken or the egg it is stressful to not have a baby when you are ready the fertility treatments are stressful. So did the stress come first and made us infertile? Or is it just that not having a baby when we are ready and trying to figure out why is extremely stressful? I talk to my patients about this every day. Listen, we cannot eliminate stress, but we all can work hard on stress management tools that are individualized to us. It's important to not try to completely compartmentalize and just ignore feelings and ignore emotions and put them in the box that often works very well in a short time frame but eventually you got to deal with it and it's got to be the right thing for you one-on-one -on -one therapy is amazing not for everyone group therapy can be awesome journaling walking finding time for you spending time with friends it doesn't have to be full-on meditation which I actually find really intimidating. I understand the benefits, but mindfulness, where you're just kind of thinking through things and being present, that's a little bit less intimidating. So I have a great video here on stress and fertility. Where I, go, I go into a deep dive and really go through the research and even give some wonderful tools that can help you find resources that are right for you. I'd love for you to listen to my interview with Dr. Ali Domar on my Baby or Bust Fertility podcast, but Ali Domar has done so much for understanding the link between stress and fertility from a physiological standpoint, from an emotional standpoint. 
um, how intervening and working with mindfulness strategies has absolutely improved chances of getting pregnant either with or without fertility treatment like IVF. So look for that episode in season two of my Baby or Bust Fertility podcast. Listening to her go through her own research is incredible and uplifting because it's hard when you are worried about stress impacting your fertility then you're stressed about being stressed and so you can't eliminate the stress but you can work towards managing it and really learning things that can help you for beyond your fertility journey like for the rest of your life so it's a wonderful important resource and really hope that you can find management tools that work right for you tip number four supplements and fertility we all want that magic supplement that is going to give us a baby and i have been helping for almost 20 years in this field and it seems like every five years or so there's a magic new supplement that is the thing that people should take in order to improve egg quality sperm quality etc and they're kind of like fads they come and go and nothing can replace overall health and well-being so you can't take a supplement and ignore the foods that you're eating or stress management or sleep or exercise but supplements are important so a prenatal vitamin especially if you take it three months before you conceive can decrease the chances of a lot of pregnancy complications vitamin d is essential for our overall health and well-being our immune system and early pregnancy i practice in seattle where we do not get enough sunlight and we are all vitamin D deficient. And so I think about that a lot for my patients. I have two resources here. I have a wonderful video on how to find a right prenatal vitamin and go through some of the confusing topics like vitamin A is essential for early baby development and your fertility, but vitamin A derivative is used for something called Accutane to help with acne. And so many people are worried about taking Accutane because high levels of this in early pregnancy are associated with birth defects. So then people are afraid of taking vitamin A. Vitamin A is an amazing antioxidant. It's like the Goldilocks supplement. You don't want too much or too little. So I've got a great video here all about vitamin A. But big, huge warning, the supplement industry is a $200 billion industry and most companies are spending more money on marketing than actually high quality ingredients. And you've got to realize that in the United States, the FDA does not regulate supplements like it does prescription medications. And so there are a lot of things that are being sold on the shelf that what's in the bottle is not what's actually in the label. So you have got to be very careful about where you're buying your supplements and thoughtful. So I have a whole video on how to find safe supplements and please always review your supplements with your doctor. So doctors often will ask about prescription medications, but you should review supplements as well because some supplements will interfere with some of the medications that you're taking, especially for fertility treatments. So these things are so important to understand and really think through, but also you do not need to buy a shelf full of supplements. Like we can only absorb so much and I've been doing so many telemedicine visits with patients and I'm like, okay, let's go over your prescription medications and your supplements and they bring in like their supplements like in a bag or they show me, they take the phone and they t show me the shelf in their kitchen with supplements and I'm like, how do you take 20 bottles a day? or 20 pills a day or whatever. You know, I get it though, because you feel so out of control when you're going through your fertility journey that by taking a supplement, it feels like you're taking some control back. And the supplement industry is playing into that. So just be wary. More is not necessarily better and sometimes it's harmful. Supplements can interfere with each other and you've gotta be really careful about where you are buying them from. And tip number five, the last tip is think about limiting toxins and endocrine disruptors. This is a big topic. It's overwhelming. This is something that I did not learn in medical school. I did not learn in residency. I just started learning about it at the end of my fellowship at Stanford when I was learning all about fertility. And it is something that's really overwhelming to learn about at first. We are exposed to so many different chemicals every single day, whether it's in products that we use in our skin, whether it is a water bottle that we're using, whether it's food storage containers, 
we are exposed to plastics and toxins, uh, BPA, phthalates, parabens, and high levels of these toxins have been shown to disrupt hormonal communication, impact egg quality, sperm quality and function, increase miscarriage risk, decrease chances of success with fertility treatments like IVF. When you first open the door to this knowledge, it gets really overwhelming. I started teaching myself about it because my patients were asking questions. And as I was writing my books on integrative fertility, planting the seeds of pregnancy, and my miscarriage book, Not Broken, An Approachable Guide to Miscarriage and Recurrent Pregnancy Loss, I needed to talk about lifestyle modifications for my patients and I did a deep dive into the research. So anybody that tells you that, oh, the re there's no research on it, I'm sure these chemicals are safe, that's absolutely just not true. You just have to do a little bit of research and it gets quite overwhelming. But what I take away from it is awareness is really important. We cannot assume that the businesses that are making these products are proving that the chemicals are safe before they put them in. There's such a feeling in the industry of like the dose makes the poison. And so people and companies will say, oh, well, the amount of BPA that's in my product is totally fine. But nobody's thinking about how much BPA people are exposed to with the multiple different products that they're using. And um, so that takeaway is important. The other takeaway is that the studies really show it's people just with the highest levels of these exposures that have these negative outcomes. And if you make solid changes in your everyday life, you can absolutely decrease your levels. So what's beautiful is our bodies do a great job of clearing most of these chemicals. And so if we make changes in our everyday life and we can bring those levels down, we can improve our reproductive health and our overall health. So that's really important to understand. And I've got videos here and I've got the research cited and the videos here on you know toxins and fertility, on parabens, on phthalates. Um, you can go to my website and look at my blog post with all of the resources listed and links. Um, of course, you can read my books where everything, every single thing I say is referenced um, because I really wanted to make sure that I got it right because it's such an important message. But there are three things that you can do today to decrease the level of toxin exposure that you have and make a difference. So it can feel overwhelming when you learn about this, but try these three things and you can absolutely make a difference. Tip number one, get plastic out of your kitchen. So you can't do that for everything, but don't store food in plastic containers. Um, try to switch from a plastic water bottle. Use glass, use stainless steel instead. So any plastic, even if it says BPA free, I tell my patients there's BPA through Z. Like there's so many chemicals in plastic that even if it's BPA free, that doesn't mean it's free from chemicals that don't disrupt hormones. So get plastic out of your kitchen as best as you can. It's a huge step forward. Tip number two, next time you buy a product, go fragrance free if that's an option. Laundry detergent, soaps, lotions, don't use scented candles, fragrance, air fresheners, no. Fragrance is often code word for parabens or phthalates or other chemicals that are used to stabilize the fragrance. And in the United States, uh, fragrance for companies is trademarked. So companies are asked to list all the ingredients, but if they can say that an ingredient is actually a part of their fragrance, they can just list the word fragrance. And so these chemicals can be endocrine disruptors and you might not know that you're being exposed to them because it just says fragrance. So um, of course, fragrance is wonderful, but just, you know, limit the number of products in your home that actually have fragrance. And tip number three, choose less processed foods. And when you are eating your fresh fruits and vegetables, wash them, whether they are organic or not. Organic does not necessarily mean pesticide free or chemical free. And just washing your fruits and vegetables can really decrease the amount of chemicals that you're exposed to. Processed foods also just in the process of packaging or storing or creating the food itself is often exposed to a lot of plastics along the way and in that storage container or in the way that the food was processed, it's often getting some chemicals in it. So again, if you have the option of non-processed versus processed, go for the non-processed and when you're eating your fruit, fresh fruits and vegetables, wash them because it will be a wonderful way to decrease the amount of chemicals you're exposed to. All right, I know that was a lot of information. Let's do a recap. 
we went over five tips that can help you get pregnant sooner. Tip number one, know your menstrual cycle, understand when you're ovulating so you know when to time trying. And if you are not ovulating on a regular basis, get help to figure out why and help you figure out when to time trying. Tip number two, nutrition is key. Think about your overall health and well-being to help your reproductive health. Tip number three, there are other lifestyle optimization, things that you can do beyond nutrition, like exercise, optimizing sleep, stress management, that will help you be healthier to help you be more fertile. Tip number four, think about your supplements. Supplements are important. There are great benefits for them, but too much is not a good thing and be very, very careful what supplements you're taking and always review it with your doctor. And tip number five, think about toxins, limit exposure to endocrine disruptors with simple everyday things and choices in your products. Um, making small choices can make a big difference in your fertility. I hope you learned something today. Make sure you like this video, comment with questions that you have, subscribe to this channel so you get my weekly videos on reproductive health. And as always, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples. Thank you.